my name is Cassie Brown and today I'm going to show you how to make these wonderful carnations really quick and easy and as you can see I'm using different colors and I'm going to be using the airbrush to show you exactly how to color them in different ways I'm also going to be using the light and bright clay which is fabulous to use I've already started by taking some of the light and bright clay out of the packet so we'll move that to one side now, when you first get this out of the packet, it's very soft in texture. It almost feels like marshmallow to use. So it's quite nice. And what we're gonna do is color it first. Now I'm gonna use a base color of yellow. And I'm gonna split the paste into two. And then I'm using Edible Art Sunflower. What I'm gonna do now, make a little bowl and then we just tip a little bit of colour into there, like so. And then we gently fold. Now be careful you don't get a pocket of air in there, otherwise it all goes everywhere. We're gonna put the lid back on that and glue it to one side. Now when we're colouring, I'm gently pressing down first to make sure that there's no pockets of air in there. And then I'm rubbing with my fingers and the colour starts appearing. There it is. So it's a lovely bright yellow. And I always mix half of my paste first so that I can change the shade of it, whether I want it darker or lighter. Now you can use paints in this, in the light and bright clay. I don't tend to do that, simply because if I'm putting it on a cake, I don't really want paints and anything toxic on there. So I always stick to the either the airbrush colours or the dusts to colour. So you can see that's a really nice strong colour. Now I'm going to add the white, tone it down. So we mix those both together. And this would be exactly the same as how you would do with your, your flower paste when you're making things. You can see I'm doing it with my fingers like this. It really gets it mixed in. You can get a lovely marble effect doing this as well. So we get that nice and soft, and as I say, it's beautiful in your hands, really soft to use. And then I'm just going to rub with my fingers to make sure there's no streaks and that's all coloured lovely. And then we roll into a ball ready to start. So what I tend to do is squeeze the one part out first. I don't roll all at once, the, the whole area. Because if you do that, you do tend to end up getting stuck to the board. So we get our large rolling pin. You see I've got a little handle here. And then when we press down and roll, you see that rolls out lovely. I'm not being as hard as I would if this was flour paste. I'm actually being much more gentler on the rolling pin. You can see it's rolling out really nice. Now I know that that's a big enough area but we do just double check by using the cutters. Now there's two cutters that comes in the set. I'm only going to be using the big one today. So we'll take the little one away. And I want to get that really thin. So I do introduce the smaller rolling pin now. This just makes it much thinner. And we press down gently, see where it starts to go thinner. And don't worry if it folds over like this, you really won't see that in the end. And always keep lifting up to make sure the paste is not sticking. So once we've got that, I'm just going to make sure that is fitting perfectly. You might be able to see the two thin ridges that I've got there. Just roll that little area out, just in case. I want it to be nice and thin on the edges of the cutter as I go. So then what we're going to do is place over the top. Oh, 
before I do that, I'm actually going to put a bit of corn flour. You don't have to, but sometimes the paste, when you push down, it will stick to the board rather than sticking to the cutter. And I really want it in the cutter. So position that again, press down, give a gentle little wiggle, just gentle, not too much. And then we remove the excess paste. Now, because this is air drying clay, make sure it's all mixed in again and into that perfect ball. And then what I tend to do is cover it using a little lid and that just keeps it um, protected. It stops it from drying out. So we'll put that to one side. Now, when we turn the paste over, it does normally stay in the cutter. Sometimes it doesn't, which is fine. But if it does stay in the cutter, it's a bonus because you can then use your finger to clean around the edges. So I'm just gently pressing down and pulling away, not too much, but just getting rid of any excess that might be around that. Because this is um, very delicate around the edges here, you don't want any paste there that shouldn't be there. And this also stops it from getting that furry edge that you sometimes get using cutters. And once we've done that, that all looks like it's cut beautifully. I'm going to turn it back onto the board. Then with one finger, just gently pull all the way around. Then turn it and gently do the other side. And then we can lift away. As you can see, you've got a beautiful cut out shape there, which looks a little bizarre at the moment. It doesn't look much like a carnation. The effect that we want to end up with is this one here, which is nice and, and frilly all the way around the edges. So I'll show you how to do that next. We're gonna get lots of corn flour on our board. And then we're gonna move it over. Now you can use lots of different things for this. You can use a cocktail stick. I'm using a scriber. Um, you can also use a rolling pin, the pointed end. So whichever works for you. I tend to mix and match between the two, to be honest. Make sure that there's no debris um, on your pointed tool or scriber as this is. And then what we're gonna do is gently press around the edges. And can you see that frills beautifully straight away? And because the cornflower's here, it's not going to stick. So we're just gently pressing down all the way around. We do need to go around this area as well. Just make sure that's all covered. As you can see, this really lifts it. And keep making sure there's cornflower there to stop it sticking. And if anything does stick, just make sure that that point is completely clean. It will only stick if there's something on there that shouldn't be. So probably a little bit of um, paste. So we can go in. Gently pressing down. Now if we go in too much, we'll get these rolls here, which we don't want. We're only using this area of the scriber as we go in. And it's starting to stick to the board, so a little bit more corn flour as we go. And then spin round. And we do exactly the same on the other side. Now, some people would turn it over and then do the opposite side. I know if you're doing the all-in-one rows, you would do that. When I'm making the carnation, I don't. I tend to leave it as it is, and then I'm still gently doing exactly the same on the same side, just pressing down on each little tag, if you like, and just making that really thin. For me, it's important that the edges of this carnation are very, very thin. I just think it makes it look more lifelike. So we're working our way around. 
press him down gently as we go. Now don't worry if you do go a little bit thin, you can see there I've gone through to the board, that's fine, it will just add to the lifelikeness of it. So if I bring this one over, you can see it doesn't make any difference to the end product, it's still going to look beautiful. So then we're going to keep going all the way around. This is the most time consuming part. Once we've done this, we're going to move on to colouring. And then once we put it together, it turns into a carnation very, very quickly. So don't think that this looks very time consuming. It's just this area doing this little frill that you want to get right as you're working. And then just the last little bit, just round this little area. And I'll see you after the break. Hi, like what you see so far? Want to see more exclusive videos? Would you like to know how I get my inspiration? Then my Patreon page is for you. Time and time again, I receive so many messages from people who are scared to get their airbrushes out of the box. I know how this feels because I was the same. If this is you, then you need to go to my Patreon site where I give you step-by-step -step tutorials on how to feel more confident using your airbrush. Not only this, but me, Cassie Brown, will be giving you guidance and support, step-by-step -step instructions on how to make beautiful bouquets and arrangements to adore your cakes and other things that you're creating. Patreon is a subscription site where all cake and craft enthusiasts can have their say in the way they learn and what they see on the Patreon site. I'm a sugar craft and airbrushing specialist. I've been to over seven different countries. I love teaching and traveling, and I love sharing my skills with you in airbrushing, sugar flowers, and air drying clays. I'm really excited to be sharing my Patreon page with you. So for more information, please go to my website, cassiebrown.com. Welcome to the second part of my video. Next, I'm gonna be showing you how to airbrush these lovely petals. So as you can see, I've used the cutter and exactly the same technique to create my second one, which is exactly the same. So I've cut it out, I've then frilled the edges and it's ready to go. So I've got two of these, they're exactly the same size. Um, that's what I will be doing next. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the airbrush first before we color these up, before you see the magic happening. Just for those of you who've never airbrushed before, so I always get, this is just plain copy paper. Always get a nice pile of that and put it on your work surface. I always say practice with paper first before going on to your real thing. And also, this is my preferred airbrush. Um, this is um, part of the Arizum kit. The airbrush is lovely, it's a dual action, so you press down for the air and back for the color but it's also got a little nut in there that you can change it so that it's just a single action. So it kind of answers all of your needs really if you're used to single or dual action. The other feature that this airbrush has got is this little nut here. I can tighten this up or loosen it and it will stop me pulling the trigger back, which is amazing. So if I close it off completely, I will get a perfect fine line. If I open it up, I'll get a wider spray. So if you are a little bit heavy handed, then this is the airbrush for you because it will stop you being heavy handed. It's really clever design. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna use some pink and we're gonna put some pink drops in the color well at the top here. And I've put about five or six drops in there. Now with this airbrush, the compressor will only come on when I press down for the air. So it's not on straight away, but it will be in a minute. Now we're gonna go close to the paper to start with and press down and pull back and we get a line as you can see now what i want you to do is practice getting that into a finer line so we come really close to our paper and we press down and we pull back to get that really fine line now i always say it's impossible to get a perfect line so enjoy yourself while you're doing this do a nice little squiggle and as you can see, that's a lovely fine line. Now, the more I pull back the trigger, the wider the spray. So the heavier the spray will be. And let me just show you this little nut here. So we close it right up. 
I can't press the trigger. And now think of a clock and do just 15 minutes. So turn it just to 15. And then we come down. Now I can't pull that trigger back anymore. So that's as much as I can do, as you can see. It's never gonna go any wider. So that is actually perfect if you are having difficulty with your airbrush, if you're pulling back the trigger, if you're a little bit heavy handed, which I must confess I am at times. Um, so this is perfect. But what we're going to do today is create this spray here. So I do need to open it up a lot more. We just turn that gently. You can see it opening up there. I'm just gonna test on this piece of paper. You can see I can really pull it back and get that nice spray. And this is the one that we're gonna go for today. I also just wanna show you quickly about your distance as well. So with this in mind of your thin spray and thick spray, I'm gonna pull back the trigger to get that fine line. I'm gonna keep the trigger the same distance, but I'm just going closer and further away from the paper. And by doing this, it shows you that the closer you are, the more defined line you get. The further away you are, the more of a mist you get. So this actually represents if you are dusting the edges of a flower. And this is where we're going to be aiming for now when we colour our carnation. So I always tend to work on a clean piece of paper just so that we can see what we're doing. I'm going to lay them both down. Now I am going to hold this down because if you can see, it will want to blow away. So we're just going to hold it down. I'm going to come above, directly above, not at an angle. If you come at an angle, it will just be a different effect. So it's not wrong, it's just I want to come from above. And I'm going to gently spray. And I'm spraying quite heavily, as you can see. And I would do the same on sugar as I'm doing on the air drying clay. And we go around the edges. I'm gonna stop and turn that. You see straight away, I think that's really looking pretty. And then we're gonna move around the top. So we're doing exactly the same to color that. I think that's looking pretty already. That would look beautiful around the edge of a cake. Just that on its own with a little ribbon around the side would look really nice. So the same again. Don't worry if it blows away. It's not going to go far. It is because we're using the light and bright clay and it is very light. Perfect if you're making cards and you're wanting to send stuff through the post. There we go. So those are my two sections that are airbrushed. Can I just draw your attention to what's happened here though? This was by accident. But as you can see, you can also use these as stencils. And that would also look amazing around a cake um, or on top of a cake or to bring the pattern of the carnation into your cake anywhere. I just think that's a really nice effect. Now the colour that I've used is chroma colour. It's a water-based colour. I personally think that it's really, really good. And if you want a colour chart, you can go to my website and download it free of charge. And it gives you about 75 colours just by using the 12 colours because we actually mix the colours. We count the drops in as we go. So we would say maybe three drops of yellow to one drop of blue, and that would equal your green. So the colour chart allows you to do all that. But going back to the carnations, as you can see, really happy with those. They look amazing. Now they are starting to dry out a little bit. So I'm going to go back to our board. Now because they are starting to dry out a little bit, I am going to introduce the water brush. Um, with this clay, you normally don't need to do this because it sticks to itself. But I'm going to use it because it's drying out a little bit. Now I'm also going to introduce some wire. Now this is a 24 gauge wire. I'm actually gonna fold it in half. I'm gonna fold it in half and then put a little hook on the end. 
like so. So I've just used my nail and folded it over to create that little hook. And then I'm going to tape down the wire. So we're going to get our green florist tape. Now if you've never used this before, this is already cut in half for me. If you've got the thicker tape, just get a pair of scissors and cut it in half. It will last you twice as long and it's just much, much easier to use. Now what we're going to do, I stretch to release the glue and then I'm going to hold around, press down to create a kind of flag and that will anchor onto there as you can see. Now I do tend to put a little bit of corn flour on my fingers because sometimes this tape likes to stick to you rather than to itself. So a little bit of corn flour will stop that happening. And then I'm going to, I'm gently turning with these fingers and I'm pulling to release the glue with my other hand. So we keep going, so I'm pulling and then I'm twisting. I pull and then I twist. Always go all the way to the bottom as well. And then that's your wire covered and ready to go. Now we need to come back to our paste and I just want a tiny little ball of paste about the size of a, a pea. And we're gonna put that just on the end of our hook as a little anchor. And we just want, press it down so that it's sealed. We just want that to be like a little cotton bud really. That's gonna help secure this on. And then we can have fun putting it together. So now what we're gonna do is a little bit of water and I'm going to put it just along, I'm gonna squeeze it, get a little bit of water out there. And then I'm gonna put that along the center, like so. So all the way along. And I'm not putting much, don't go around the edges, just along that center. And then what we're going to do is fold it over. So try and get it in the middle when you're doing this. I'm folding it in half. And I'm not pushing all the way up. Just that little section at the bottom here. Press down. Now we need to do the same with the other one. So that water going all the way across. Like so. And then gently fold it again. And press down. Now this is where the magic happens, it's really quick and simple. I'm going to put water just along that one side, just along the bottom there. And then we're going to start wrapping it around. Now I need to make a kind of concertina first, so I fold it a little bit and I'm going to put the bud in the middle. And then I'm folding and we're doing this all the way around. Now I'm keeping my eye on the top bit as I'm doing this. And we do it all the way around to make our first carnation. And as you can see, the colour's on one side, so it looks amazing. I'm going to do that on the second half. So exactly the same technique used here. We're just folding that around. And as you can see, I'm squeezing in at the same time. Squeeze that up. And look at that. That looks like an amazing carnation already. I'll see you after the break. Hi, and welcome to today's tutorial. I'm Jeanette from Jeanette Reverse and Cake Craft. And today, we're going to make this beautiful, vintage perfume bottle. So you'll be learning lots of things about carving a cake into shape, covering an awkward shape with sugar paste. I'll show you how to do all the beautiful decoration, how to make a little ball on the top. Loads to learn, 
So let's get started. Welcome back to part three. Next I'm going to show you how to do the calexes on the back of your carnation. So next I'm going to show you how to sort out the back of your carnation. As we squeezed it together I was really concentrating on how the carnation looks at the front and you can still squeeze that and manipulate it to how you want it to make it look lovely. You can even get your rolling pin and just move areas out if you want to change it a little bit. But as you can see, where I've airbrushed just the one side of the carnation, you have a mixture of these lovely colours. So you've got the pink coming through, but you've also got the yellow, which was on the back, which I think makes it look really pretty. Really nice finish to that. So what we're going to do is tidy up the back now. As you can see, it's a bit messy. So just get a pair of scissors and snip off the excess. Take that little bit away. And then I'm just going to press in and round the edges because we want it to be nice and rounded at the bottom. Like so, just make sure it's not moving anything too much at the front. And then that will be fine. So just pinch it in and that will look lovely. Now we're going to move on to the calyx which is a really simple thing to use. I have got two Kalex cutters here. Now, as you can see, there is a very, very slight difference in the size. So one is the more larger and this one is slightly smaller. So what we're gonna do is color our paste and then we're gonna use those two cutters. Now the paste I'm coloring, the same paste that we use to make the petals, as you can see, it's colored yellow as well. So I'm just gonna use this to add my green powder to. Now what you can do, if you do have excess paste and if it's drying out a little bit, then a quick tip for you, you don't need to throw it in the bin. You can turn it into a rose cone and then just pop it on the edge of a wire and let it dry. And then you have lovely rose cones ready to make big roses with. And you can actually put sugar on these, obviously don't eat them, but you can add the sugar to make your lovely roses as well. But it saves you a lot of time and a lot of money, which is fabulous. So let's color this green. So mix it first, get it nice and soft. And then the green that I'm using today is Spring Green by Edible Art. Just I'm doing that gently. And the same as before, so I make a little bowl shape and then gently tip the color into there. Now you can always add colour but you can't take away. So once you've got a nice little amount in there, gently fold. Be careful of those air bubbles that I mentioned earlier. So we fold it round and then we start pressing it in so that it mixes. Now I'm not too sure if I need more colour so I will leave that out a little bit longer. But there you are, you can see the colour starting to mix really well. Now this particular clay, it doesn't really like to be dusted with colour, but it does love to be mixed in. So we're just mixing that nicely. That's actually a nice colour, I'm happy with that, so I'm going to leave it as that nice spring green. Now we put the lid on. And then we can roll out. Now remember what I said earlier, I always keep a tab so that it's, I've got something to hold on to. But we don't need all of this. So we're just rolling out this little section here. Gently roll out, like so. And then what we're gonna do is take the larger cutter, we gently press down Give a little wiggle and then that cuts out. Again, we always clean with our finger just to make sure there's no excess on there. And I'm going to pop that one out. 
there's a little bit of excess which I can just move away there you see that we just get rid of those little bits and then I'm going to come back and cut out the smaller one so press down give a little wiggle and as you can see that cuts out too and we just smooth away around the edges like so now what I'm going to do again just pop it out I tend to use the rounded end of my rolling pin for that so that that's popped out and that's looking lovely and again cover your clay that's a real important thing to do now you can use a foam pad or you can also use the palm of your hand so if we just place this onto the palm of my hand and then I'm gently going to roll around the edges very gently so this is just going to soften it really and it makes the edges a little bit thinner it gives you that illusion that it's actually thinner than what it is which I think always looks lovely now there's a little bit bent over there but I'm not overly panicked about that put that one down you can see the movement that I've created so just gently press down not too much You can also roll your ball tool as well, or your pin, if you prefer, like so. There we are, that's looking good. Now, there isn't much difference between these two cutters, so make sure you do put the larger one on first. So I'm gonna get my water brush, and I'm gonna get my carnation. I'm gonna place the calyx, onto the bottom of my wire then we gently push up so that it's close to the top now with my water brush I'm just going to brush a layer of water on there as I say this clay has got its own glue on so sometimes it will stick to itself automatically but I tend to use it very much like sugar now I'm gently pressing up and around And that's our first calyx on. And then we come to our second one, which we push in. We push all the way up and then the same thing. So a little bit of water, just gently brushed on. Now this time when you're adding this, try and go in between the larger calyx. Can you see? So it just falls in between the last one that you've done. So gently move them if you need to. But this will create that effect so that it looks like it's a double layered. Now no flower is perfect, so don't spend hours trying to get this perfect. I think it looks lovely just the way it is. You can see it's not perfectly lined up at the back, but I think that adds to the texture. And I think it's coloured beautifully. I'm very pleased with that. So that's our larger carnation. I'm just going to talk a little bit about colouring and also showing you how to colour one that's a complete, already coloured, just a gentle sort of yellow colour. But then I want to show you how to do it so that it's um, slightly different. So this one here, as you can see, I've just airbrushed over the top of that. So I've made the carnation first and then I've completely airbrushed it. As you can see, it's a totally different look. So that's something I'm going to show you next. So remember, we bring the paper over. We always work on that paper. I'm just going to put these to the side. I also want to show you some other ones that I've done here. This one. Um, that I created for the Cubica Sugar Flowers that I made. As you can see, that's a nice lime green one. And then I've just gently kissed the edges with a little bit of red tone there. So there's so many different colour options that you can have with this. I'll bring another one in, which is more of a reddy colour. As you can see, that stands out nice as well. Or you can just go for a simple yellow. I think that looks lovely too. So now we've got all these lined up. I'm just going to show you 
how to airbrush this. So I'm going to use the same colour, we've got that nice pink in there, but I'm going to just kiss the edges. So what we're going to do is do it with two different angles. I'm going to hold the airbrush over the top and I'm actually aiming towards the paper and then I bring the flower into the spray as I'm spraying. So spray on the paper and then I'm bringing the, row, the carnation gently in as we go around. And then when we look at it, you can see it looks quite pale, but if we look at the sides, it's got more colour. So we could actually leave it like that, but I'm then going to come in at a different angle and just kiss the top a little bit more. So I'm just kissing the edges. If I wanted it a darker colour, I would spray a lot heavier, but I'm just kissing all the edges all the way around. in the middle and I think that looks lovely. See you after the break. Welcome back to part four and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make the smaller carnations using a different cutter. So next I'm going to be showing you how to make much smaller carnations. So if I just grab the carnation I made earlier, as you can see it's quite big compared to the smaller ones that I'm going to be making next and the very tiny one which I think would be great for making gypsophilum. So let's get started. Now I am going to change things a little bit. I'm going to use the different clay which is the Soft Then Strong by FMM. I just think it's a nice clay. Now this one is one I would use if I was doing bridal bouquets or anything like that. It's a little bit more durable. The other one is grey and light and it goes in the post but this one's going to be more like your sugar. So I'm opening up. This is what it looks like when you open your packet and it's already wrapped in this polythene as you can see. Now what I tend to do is keep it in the polythene, it will keep it nice and dry, you haven't got to worry about it. So we just take a little bit of that off and then I tend to wrap it back up again to stop it drying out and that's fine as it is. Now with this one you can add a little bit of white colouring but I think I'm not sure, I think I'll add a little bit of yellow to this one as well. Not to all of it, just to a little bit. So I'm just going to split it in half. I'm going to use some white and some coloured a little bit yellow. So exactly the same technique in colouring. So just a couple of... I'm being very careful not to let all the colour out. And then the same thing, we press. I'm just going to put the lid on the colour. and then we start mixing away. And it mixes in just as nicely, but this one, as you can see, is a little bit more firmer. It's a little bit more like sugar when we're working with it. And if you don't add white to this, it will dry a little bit opaque, which is fine when we're doing flowers, because a lot of flowers are kind of opaque see-through. So they look quite nice. So you can see that little bit of color's gone quite a long way there and we'll use some white as well. So what I'm doing with this one, I'm gonna just cover that little bit of clay up so it doesn't dry out. 
and then we're going to start rolling. Now you'll feel the difference when you're using this clay. It is very different to the other one. And you can be much more firmer as you're rolling. I'm still lifting though to make sure it's not sticking to the board. As you can see. And you can start seeing the green colour of the board through the paste, which tells me I'm rolling nice and thin. So I'm going to put a little bit of corn flour down now ready to cut out so I'm just making sure that fits and then we press down give that gentle wiggle and then I'm using my finger I do this with all clays and sugar just to make sure that it cuts out nicely around the edges like so and then we just pop it out so I'm going to put that there ready and then I'm going to just cut out the smaller one too So we're just pressing down, getting that nice and thin. Nice and gentle as you're rolling as well. Make sure it's not sticking and then we're going to press down and get that little wiggle. Now again, always just rub your finger over the edge and then pop it out of the cutter. Now always cover up your paste and then we're going to start doing the frill. So we need to do this exactly the same way as we did the other one. So lots of corn flour and then we use our scribing tool. You can use your rolling pin if you prefer. And then exactly the same way I'm just gently pressing down to really thin out that edge. And as you can see, it really does go very frilly, very pretty. So we gently move around. We need to do this all the way around the edge. These are very pretty, but they are much smaller. And I, I'm still not sure which one I prefer to be honest. I think they're both very pretty. This is a perfect beginner's flower. It's wonderful for you to just when you just started going because you haven't got to worry about it being super thin and doing this technique actually thins it for you. So if you're a little bit nervous of rolling that paste really thin then this helps you out immediately. It's really good. Now I'm holding the centre now, just to make sure I don't press any of those little frills in. Now that on its own would be wonderful as a little rosette maybe, if you're doing cakes. And we're just going to roll around the edges again. I'm just lifting up to make sure it's not sticking, it wants to stick to the board. So if it does, just gently lift it up and then move around the edges. And we're going all the way around exactly the same technique, pressing down. Like I said, you can use a cocktail stick. I personally find cocktail sticks just a little bit um, delicate to hold really, they're quite fine. So I do prefer the scriber or the rolling pin for this. There you go. Now you could put that on the top of there and have a lovely little rosette. That would be a beautiful flower on its own. Maybe just a little bit of um, paste in the middle to make a separate flower. But going back to the carnation, which is what we're doing, I am going to get 24 gauge wire. And I'm going to cut the wire in half. We don't need all. In fact, I'm going to cut it into three. So one, two, and there's the third. And then we put a little hook. So I tend to do it with my fingers. If you haven't got nails that you can bend the wire over, then you can get your little snippers. I tend to use my snippers that I've cut the wire with, and I'm just holding the end of the wire and twisting. That's all I do to create that little hook. So I'll just do that again for you. So we hold the end of the wire with our twi little snippers 
and I just twist with my hand and that creates that little hook for you. Then we need to just put a little bit of paste. Get a little bit of paste. And if you can remember the same as what we did with the first one, we need that little ball of paste just on the end of that wire. Now we don't need them very big, so the ball of paste I'm using is actually a lot smaller, okay, because it's got to fit in the middle of there. So we put this on as well. So now what we're going to do, we'll use the smaller one. I'm going to put this wire into the centre of my smaller one first and I'm pushing it up. Now I'm going to get my water brush and just make sure there's a bit of water coming out there. I'm just touching the centre of that and then I am folding it round and I'm squeezing it up to the top. You might want to stick to you, mine does. <laughs> so a little bit of corn flour on your fingers if it's preferring you to itself. And there we have a lovely little centre. So now I'm going to get the next one and build that around it too. So again, water in the centre. And then I'm literally just pulling it up with my fingers. All, all of my fingers and my thumbs are joining in on this. And we're squeezing that together, like so. And there we have a little carnation, which I think looks lovely. So now what we're going to do is show you just how to colour that with a different colour. So I'm going to bring my paper over. And this time, let's just kiss the edges of that with a little bit of orange. Now the Kalex I would do exactly the same as I did with my others the one I did previously. I'm going to get my airbrush. Now I've taken all the colour out that I had in previously, the pink, and I'm going to put a little bit of orange in. Just a few drops. Now I'm going to test on the paper to make sure that's coming out. And then what I'm doing again is just kissing over the top. Very gently. Now this is still a little bit wet but I'm still getting the effect that I want. So very gently, just kiss the edges. And can you see I'm actually moving in to the colour as I go. And we can make this as dark as we want. But I think that looks lovely. So the base colour yellow, and then I've made it orange. You can just touch the edges around the side as well to add a bit of extra colour. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed me making and creating the beautiful carnation here, as you can see in lots of beautiful colours. Hope you can join me next week where I will be showing you the Old English Rose.